Hello, and welcome to a documentary that will make you too tired. This program is about the significance of bicycle infantry in the early 1900s. We'll be talking about how it aided the economic woes of participants in World War I and how it contributed to the war itself. Bicycle infantry is the military use of bicycles in conflict. Many countries use this, including the UK, Italy, and Germany. So sit back and enjoy the show. Try to learn a thing or two. Or don't. You still have to watch this anyway. We begin this documentary with a little background information. The year is 1917, when Germany and Central Powers are pressing hard against the Allies. The war is not just fell on the front lines, but also at home, where instead of getting shot at, people were just too busy starving. Countries fighting during World War I participated in total war. This caused economies to focus mainly on wartime production, forced civilians to ration food for soldier and horse usage, enabled women to be part of the workforce, and on top of that, bare necessities were hardly found. War rationing was plaguing society, and the economy was taking a toll. Food and fuel was saved almost exclusively for military usage. Horses became too overpriced to maintain for transport. The soldiers needed a newer, cheaper way of transport on the field. The answer to this predicament was the bicycle. Historically, bicycles lessened the need for horses, fuel, and vehicle maintenance. The bicycles needed no feeding, did not fatigue, and therefore was less costly to maintain on a battlefield. In addition, the bicycles would transport heavier loads at the speed of a normal man could walk, but at loads he could not normally bear. With all the focus on ironworks and manufacturing, the bicycles became readily available in large quantities to most of Europe's standing armies. Take the Birmingham Small Arms Company for example. With the high factory production in the war's beginning, they began to focus on producing the new war bikes, in addition to the traditional firearms product. Such factory works helped to stabilize the British economy during World War I. In a time where so many men have been shipped off to war, goods need to be heavily produced to maintain supply levels. In the early stages of World War I, the network that paved gravel roads in Western Europe helped the transition from the use of horses towards bicycle transport. Bikes were less expensive, and training for the machines wasn't as difficult compared to horses and tanks. As a result, the warring countries could focus spending on other parts of the war, like training infantry or manufacturing firearms. In World War I, the Italian Bersaglieri were a light infantry division of the Italian army. Of this light infantry, one of the soldiers, who was also wounded during combat, was Benito Mussolini. Near the end of the war, the Bersaglieri was converted into a bicycle division. The Bersaglieri were trained to high physical and marksmanship standards. Similar to the French, a level of independence and initiative was encouraged so that they could ride in looser formations for quick maneuvers and easy evasion. The Bersaglieri cyclists served on the front lines of battle, mostly to guard the slow moving infantry. In rare instances, they are expected to serve as shock troops to break enemy defenses. However, it was usually better when they performed recon work as opposed to any real fighting. Not to be outdone by Italians, the British had their own crew. These bicycle riding soldiers were known as the Army Cyclist Corps. They were active during the First World War as well, and they were part of the British Army. With the first complete bicycle unit raised up in 1888, they were known as the 26th Middlesex Rifle Unit. Cyclists were employed repeatedly in the earlier periods of the 20th century. Even though they were not deployed as organized combat formations, the bicycle infantry was found to be invaluable for reconnaissance and communications work, being lighter, quieter, and cheaper to support than horses. The same horses which ate so much food and died in such numbers that they were essentially dead weight in the war, literally and figuratively speaking. Most units of the corps served out their time there, providing replacement jobs to infantry battalions. However, some were converted back to conventional infantry and saw active service. Some units of the corps were not sent overseas and were rarely committed to action. Rather, they were being held back in preparation for the resumption of normal mobile warfare. Cyclists were sometimes employed in close quarters combat. However, 
in conditions of trench warfare, they are generally found to be completely ineffective. Funny enough, bicycles typically do not perform well in the middle of machine gun fire, for some reason that should be all too obvious. Their main job was to gather wounded, transport supplies, and obtain intelligence. However, these weren't the only countries that utilized the bicycle infantry. Other countries included France, Austria, and Russia. Although they weren't extensively in use, they made a profound impact for them as well. The development of pneumatic tires, coupled with shorter, sturdier frames in the late 19th century, led military establishments to investigate their applicability. Of course, when the military experts discovered all the advantages of a bicycle infantry, they immediately installed them in the combat. Several experiments involving bikes were conducted in the earliest parts of the war. Researchers wanted to know whether or not a bicycle would be practical in the army. Unshockingly, it was discovered that the bikes could carry more and travel more further than the normal walking man. The bicycle became more developed with the use of intellectuals. Improvements included the ability for bikes to fold, which meant it could be collapsed and carried across the back of a rider. This made it easier to transport the bicycles from point A to point B. This could be especially useful in combat, when heavy equipment could slow down or hinder troops' movement and progress. Though we had initially planned to bore you to death by going on and on about the technical aspects of fine cycling and whatnot, we decided against it and chose to show you a never before seen infomercial from the 1900s. There would have been a folding bike, but we don't have the budget for that anymore. Don't be like these Germans. Join the Italian Brasagliari and learn how to ride bikes like me. By now, you probably learned a thing or two, or you probably fallen asleep while watching. Regardless, thank you for watching.